All right, so having been a dev for a good minute or two, I thought I'd make a tutorial to help you guys create the most basic simulation, which is of course known as Hello Universe. Um, this program obviously isn't too complex, but it's got everything you need to be able to integrate yourself and play through on the planet Earth as the human player type. Okay, so I'm gonna be using Google's online development simulator for most of the project, because it has a user interface and Google pretty much owns me, but feel free to use your simulator of choice. Okay, so go to new file and we'll name it Hello Universe and it'll ask us for the game speed. It's just how quickly players experience the passage of time in your simulation. I'm going to base this on the speed of light. It doesn't really matter what you choose, I just usually prefer to code in C. So the first thing we have to do is import all our planets, stars, galaxies, and all the characters. So make sure you've downloaded the asset library. Most of the universe is going to be empty, so storage won't be a problem. That's why we call it space. So most things in the universe are procedurally generated by the computer over millions of years, but when someone integrates into your simulation, you have to designate who they're going to play as. Um, some devs like to make the playable characters in their own image, but if you saw what most developers look like, you know how bad of an idea that is. So I like to design a joke character that players might like, but nature would of course never allow. Yeah, just, just import that. Now, when you do more complex simulations, you can enable life for as many planets as you want, but for Hello Universe, Earth is the only planet with life on it. Uh, the players will probably never find out, so don't worry about that. There are also some other settings you can change for Earth individually. Uh, number of players. Uh, for Hello Universe, the only real player is you. All the other players are simulated. Difficulty. Uh, this is just how hard it is for you to get through the day. Yeah. Okay, now keep in mind that simulations tend to run pretty processor heavy. Uh, you might have heard the programming quip, you need more than one thread to make the fabric of space and time. Uh, like most niche interest jokes, I don't find it funny, but I at least understand it. Uh, simulations use fewer resources the longer they go on for, but if you have a lot of them running simultaneously, you can free up some resources by deleting some of the older players. Okay, so next are the universe settings, and we have map size. It's how big you want the observable simulation to be when players go in. The bigger you make this, the harder it will be for them to find your mistakes. Uh, number of perceivable dimensions, just leave this at 4. Not much point in doing tutorial on 5-dimensional simulations, because you would already know what that looks like. And bitrate 300,000 kilometers a second. Okay, so that's the primary programming done, so go ahead and compile that. Alright, no errors. That's unusual. At any rate, we're good to launch, but before we do, it's critical that you scrub through the timeline, check for bugs before publishing. Um, a lot of new devs have a hard time telling the difference between a bug and poor design, so I thought I'd go through a few of the most frequently asked questions I get. Uh, my stars are collapsing after billions of years. Uh, yeah, this is a bug and we don't have a solution, so we just make them invisible and call it a feature. What happens if the players discover the source code? Uh, this almost never happens, but I don't worry about it because most of my code is almost completely unintelligible anyway. Uh, what happens when the simulation is over? Uh, you get a screen to choose your payment method and you can see the high scores. Okay, so let's get back to our program. Um, go ahead and hit run and it's as easy as that. Uh, just remember, you can't patch the simulation once it's started, so no interaction is possible from outside the program. But you can always integrate yourself and go through as a player. Keep in mind that millions of years of game time are processed in just a few seconds, so if you choose a later point in time to integrate yourself, you can actually build another simulation inside that simulation, and another sim inside that one, and so on and so on. I think that's called inscription, or encryption, or recursion, or might just be a nested loop, it's not really my field. Anyway, that's more than you need to worry about right now, so congratulations on creating the Hello Universe simulation. Give yourself a pat on the back and feel free to take a hard-earned day of rest. So today's video is sponsored by Audible and I was going to suggest using this free book credit at audible.com slash explained for something a bit more on topic, but I actually just saw the movie It and I've been really wanting to read the book until I realized the You'll Float 2 tagline. It's because the book's the size of an aircraft carrier. So I went on audible.com slash explained, sign up for my own 30-day free trial because I've never used Audible before. I got 45 hours of book for free that I don't have to carry around. Um, so now I can mathematically survive up to two day road trips and I can walk anywhere or ride the bus without having to talk to someone, but someone is still talking to me. So again, if you'd like to take advantage of that, you can sign up for a free 30 day trial 
and a free book at audible.com explained, where you can follow the link in the description.